All right, welcome you to another episode of Pod for Israel, and we have with us Dr. Seth Postel, and we're going to be going into an amazing uh, concept here. It's a kind of shocking: the Gospel of the Chicken. The Gospel according to Peter's Chicken. Uh, according to Peter's Chicken. Okay, so that's a that's that's pretty good clickbait. <laughs> so, uh, but before that, we put out a survey about the Apostle Paul, and it's got over 910 comments already of questions from you guys. Thank you so much for throwing in your questions. And Dr. Broshi and I, we're going to be answering a lot of those uh, questions and misconceptions this uh, next week. But today, we're going to talk about the chicken. So why don't you just dive into that? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I uh, started to study uh, the story of Peter's rooster. Hmm. And, um, you know, I realized that uh, there's actually a message here, the gospel according to Peter's chicken or the blessing of being caught. Hmm. And I think sometimes we forget that that's actually a real blessing. Yeah. From the Lord. So we're going to be looking at John chapter 18, verses 12 through 27, and uh, just share a few thoughts about this passage. So when we talk about the gospel according to Peter's chicken or Peter's rooster, in John chapter 18, verse 27, um, it says, Peter then denied it again, denied that he knew Jesus, denied that he was a disciple. And it says that immediately the rooster crowed. Right. And, you know, when we look at the larger, the larger context here, I can, I can say that this was one morning that God made sure that Peter's rooster didn't oversleep. Right. Because history would have been very different had that rooster not crowed. Hmm. And, you know, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 6 you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the dis discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives. And as, you know, as I started to think about this rooster, what's re really remarkable is that Peter got a rooster. Right. Ju Judas didn't. Hmm. Judas did not have a rooster. And so this rooster was actually a reminder um, to us as well of the blessing as believers of getting caught, hmm. of getting exposed. It's, it's actually God's grace. Think about it again. In many ways, Peter's behavior was not much different than Judas's, but Judas didn't get a chicken. Peter did. Wow. So we want to actually learn, talk a little bit about today, about the gospel according to Peter's chicken. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I, you know, I remember seeing pictures of Balaam's donkey, right. flannel graphs, posters, comic books, right? Uh, and, and I think it's time to change this. This is, this is, I believe that, yes, that donkey's important, but Peter's chicken deserves a poster of his own. Peter's chicken deserves to be appreciated because he plays a very important part in this text. So we want to learn three gospel truths today straight from the rooster's beak. That's awesome. Yeah. So if, if you were going to podcast Peter's rooster, if he were sitting here, what would he say? If, you were to, if Peter's rooster could talk, what would he tell us? He, the first thing he would tell us is to stop trusting in ourselves. So, John chapter 18, verses 12 through 18, I'll read it. So, the Roman cohort and the commander and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him and led him to Annas first, for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now, Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die on behalf of the people. Simon Peter was following Jesus, and so was another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest. But Peter was standing at the door outside. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. Then the slave girl who kept the door said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the officers were standing there, 
having made a charcoal fire, for it was cold and they were warming themselves. And Peter was also with them, standing and warming himself. You know, it's really interesting as we kind of pan out in the Gospel of John, we, it becomes very clear that Peter actually trusted in himself to persevere. He was really right. convinced that, that he would stand when others didn't. Yeah, he had the guts, he had the, you know, the fortitude, and that's a, you, you hear that in his voice as he answers back to Yeshua, I'm never going to deny you. And yeah. yeah. John 13, 37 and 38, Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you right now? I will. I will lay down my life for you. Hmm. Jesus answered, you will lay down your life for me. Truly, truly, I say to you, a rooster will not crow until you deny me three times. You know... Peter was actually really convinced he was going to stand with Jesus, but he ended up standing with Judas. In fact, in John chapter 18, there's kind of a, a sad play on words with the word standing. Mm. So the passage begins, you know, when, they, when the soldiers come into the garden to arrest Jesus, they answered him, Jesus, they're looking for Jesus of Naz the Nazarene. He said, who are you looking for? He said to them, I am he. And Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing with them. And then if you go back down now to verse 18 in John 18, it says, Now the slaves and the officers were standing there, having made a charcoal fire, for it was cold and they were warming themselves. And Peter was also with them, standing and warming mm -hmm. himself. And you know how easily, I mean, I can attest to this, periods in my life when when my relationship to God becomes a trail of broken promises, I swear, God, I'll never do it again. I promise I'll never do this again. I'm going to try harder, God. I'm going to do more, right? And, and this is what we see with Peter. Is Peter was absolutely convinced that he was going to stand. And it, it makes a lot of sense, too, even with, you know, the Psalms, it's like, do not stand in the in place with the sinners or sit in the seat of the mockers and yeah. so forth. It's like, here he's standing with them and denying That's right. the Savior. That's right. But all of a sudden, John eighteen twenty seven, and immediately a rooster crowed. What a hmm. gift. What a gift. Peter's rooster shouts out to us, you're not as strong as you think you are. You're wow. not as strong as you think you are. Peter trusted also in himself for salvation. And we see this as well, not just that Peter was convinced that he could persevere with the Lord in his own strength. He failed with that, but he started to actually trust himself for his own salvation. And let me explain what I mean by that. Hmm. In John 18, 17, and then verses 25 through 27, we see that Peter starts to lie for self-protection. He's protecting himself. Then the slave girl who kept the door said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Then skipping down, that was verse 27, verse 25 through 27. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and he said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, being a relative of the one whose ear Peter cut off, said, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied it. Again, you know, why is Peter lying? Mm. He's lying because he's afraid he's going to lose his life. Mm. He's trying to save himself. And, you know, I think that how often as believers we can also lie. We can use lies to protect ourselves, right? Self-protection. Luke 12, 3 says something uh, that I think we all need to remember. Accordingly, whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in the inner rooms will be proclaimed upon the housetops. I know this is kind of scary, and we could take this as a warning that, or, or something threatening, that there really are no secrets, but that's actually God's grace. Right. That's God's grace that God yeah. protects us from cherishing things in the dark. Yeah. He loves us. So immediately, John 18, 27, the rooster crowed. Peter's rooster, Peter's chicken, shouts out to us, you cannot deny the truth about yourself 
Peter was denying the truth about himself. I'm not one of his disciples. Well, if you're a disciple, God's going to remind you you really are. You can't deny yeah. your new identity. And nor can we deny the truth about Jesus, that Jesus is the Messiah. He's our Savior, not us. Um, do you know what happened on April 14th and 15th, 1912? Are you aware of what happened? No, not, not to my recollection. <laughs> so, the famous story of the Titanic. And, um, right. Yeah. yeah, and interestingly enough, I like looking at some of the press releases uh, just before the Titanic set sail. So, here's a couple of them. There is no danger that that Titanic will sink. The boat is unsinkable and nothing but inconvenience will be suffered by the passengers. Hmm. Someone else said, God himself could not sink this ship. I can hear Peter saying, even if everybody else denies you, yeah. I'm going to stand. And, and you know, like Peter drew first blood. I, we know he's the <laughs> one who pulled the sword out of the sheath and yeah. sliced off the high, high priest uh, guard's ear. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. He, yeah. He, he started seemingly pretty fervent. But then how quickly it fell. That's right. I mean, that's for all of us, too. I can think of that's times right. where we were full of zeal and then crash and burn. Well, Thomas Andrews, the managing director of Harland and Wolf Shipyards. Okay, so I guess this mm. was a shipyard right. connected with the Titanic. He said after, after the Titanic disaster, let the truth be known. No ship is unsinkable. Mm. The bigger the ship, the easier it is to sink her. Wow. Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. And I think hmm. we just, Peter's rooster reminds us we're not, we're not as strong as we think we are. The Lord right. is our strength. Yeah. If Peter were sitting here in my place and he could talk, he would tell us to remember that Jesus is the hero of our faith, hmm. right? right? Jesus is the hero of our faith. Let me read some verses in John 18, 19 through 24. The high priest then answered Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered him, I've spoken openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together, and I spoke nothing in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard what I have spoke to them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the officers standing nearby struck Jesus, saying, Is that the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify of the wrong. But if rightly, why do you strike me? So Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. There's something really beautiful. I mean, you're a filmmaker, right? And we do a lot of films and videos right. at, at, at One for Israel. And actually... Uh, there's something very beautiful when we start to look at even the Bible in the context of how films are made. And you'll notice that this passage has a feature called Meanwhile Back at the Ranch. Yeah, You exactly. know Meanwhile Back oh, yeah. at the Ranch. Oh, and yeah. so, so in this Meanwhile Back at the Ranch, so what we have in – Peter is the frame. In 1815 through 18, mm -hmm. Peter is – we leave Peter off warming himself by the fire – and then in 2427, the passage picks up again with Peter warming himself by the fire. Mm. Inserted in the middle, verses 19 through 23, is Jesus. Right in the middle, okay? Yeah. Now, I know that, you know, I was in the Louvre a couple years ago before Corona. And I, as far as I know, people don't go to the Louvre to look at the frame of the Mona Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> people don't go to study – I mean, I guess they do study frames, right? But typically when you go uh, to a muse, an art museum, you know, the frame is supposed to glorify the picture, to beautify exactly. the picture. And so people yeah. don't focus on the frame. The frame is there to make us look at the picture. Yeah. And Jesus is the picture here. Jesus right. is the focus. And in fact, this is going to sound strange, but Jesus in some ways is Peter in the mirror. You say, what are you talking about? So when you stand in front of a mirror, the image is reversed. Yeah. And so everything that Peter isn't, Jesus is. Hmm. Or Jesus is everything that Peter isn't. 
Peter wow. denies his own identity to his uh, to the servants three times, right? Mm. Jesus earlier on in the garden affirmed his own identity to the soldiers three times. Wow. Peter denies Jesus. Jesus refuses to deny Peter. It's really interesting in John 18, 19, mm. it says that the high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples. But the text goes on and Jesus says nothing about his disciples, nothing mm. at all. Why? Because he was protecting them. That was his job. Peter, in our passage, swears he will lay down his life for Jesus in John 13, 37, but it was Jesus who promised to lay down his life for Peter, wow. John 10, 11. Immediately, the rooster crowed. Hmm. Peter lied to save himself. He, Peter became his own savior. He tried to be his own savior. But our security is not in our promises to God, but in his promises to us. Jesus promised that he would lay his life down. Notice in, in John 10, 27 and 28, Jesus says this, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they, shall f and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. He goes on in John 18, eight through nine, Jesus answered and told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these go their way, mm -hmm. i.e. the disciples, why? To fulfill the word which he spoke of those whom you have given me, I lost no one. Although Peter felt very afraid and he was lying to save himself, in fact, he was perfectly safe. He was yeah. perfectly safe because Jesus promised no one was going to ever snatch you out of my hand. Mm. So Peter's chicken is like a sheep, like a, like a, what do you call those? The hunting dogs, the pointers, right? Yeah. Right? So Peter's, chick, Peter's chicken points us to the good shepherd. Jesus is the focus, the hero mm -hmm. of our faith. I have a funny story. Uh, I was very m mischievous as a child, and, and so my father actually once literally saved my life. I was about seven years old. I, I grew up in New Jersey, and we went for a family vacation to Florida, and we were actually somewhere in central Florida, and I don't think I'd ever seen an alligator in my life. And we were in this park, and there was an alligator sleeping on the bank of a, of a pond. And it was a big, it was a, it was a park. And so there were a lot of people there and I started sneaking up on that alligator and I was going to grab that <laughs> alligator by his tail. And I will never, ever forget. My dad saw me just as I was about ready to grab a hold of that alligator by the tail. And he screamed so loudly that not only did he scare me, but he actually scared the alligator. <laughs> we That's both awesome. jumped in opposite directions and, and I was literally busted. He screamed and so I was there naked and exposed as a mischievous redheaded kid in front of the <laughs> watching world. He right. scared me. But the intent of my father's scream was not to expose my sin per se. Yeah. It did that, but that wasn't his intent. His intent was to save my life. Yeah. And with Peter, with Peter, I believe that that chicken, that rooster, is, is really God's cry to Peter. Yes, Peter is busted. Yes, Peter is exposed. But that chicken was there to remind Peter, once again, you're mine. You belong to me. I'm going to protect you. And yeah. so what we learn from this story with Jesus at the center is that Jesus is the hero of our faith, not us. If Peter's rooster could talk, he would tell us third and finally to be encouraged that the night is almost over. Hmm. Right? That's the night beautiful. is almost over. Verses 25 through 27. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it. And he said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest being a relative of, of the one whose, whose ear Peter cut off said, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied it again and immediately a rooster crowed. It's really interesting. I guess there are some researchers who get very bored and they, they, there was a, a university in Japan that did research on chickens, on roosters <laughs> and why they crow. And it's interesting that, you know, roosters, you know, they crow very early in the morning yeah. And they crow not because they see the light, 
but because their internal clock anticipates the light. Hmm. Right? So when you, when you hear a rooster crow, it's because that rooster is anticipating the light, anticipating the light. And so wow. when that rooster crowed for Peter, it meant that that long night was soon about to be over. Um, hmm. I actually studied Krav Maga. I learned Krav Maga, which is like an Israeli form of self-defense for four years. Right. I'm terrible. So do not attack me. Yeah, you I'm sure? I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. <laughs> But what ends up happening is you usually go into the ring for like these three-minute fights, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in Krav Maga, it's always unfair. And so usually they'll send three or four guys against you and you, or, you know, or at the same time or one at a time. And many times I would be losing and just hurting. And probably the most joyful sound that I could hear was the, the buzzer. I didn't care how badly I was being beaten. <laughs> but as soon as you heard that buzzer, you knew that, <laughs> that it was over. Yeah. It was over. And Peter's chicken was the sound of hope. I mean, I'm sure that for Peter, that was the longest night of his life. Yeah. Right? And we, some of us have these long nights of our lives, sometimes weeks and months and years. And that chicken sounded and it was, Peter, the night's almost over. A new day's just about to begin. I think of Lamentations, the heart of the book. Um, it's all about weeping and crying, but in the right in the dead smack middle of the book, Lamentations 3, 21 through 23, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hoped the Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. You know, um, I imagine when we make films here, videos at, at One for Israel, there are no irrelevant details subtle hints and subtle clues in our films. Like that, the chicken in front that, of your like computer. Like the chicken, okay. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. There are no irrelevant details in the Bible movie as well. And so, John chapter 21, verse 9, this kind of epilogue, it's a story that's tacked on to the end of John's gospel of Peter, right? And Jesus asks him, do you love me? You know, do you love me? Do you love me? And notice what it says in John 21, 9. Okay, so when they got out on the land, they saw charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread. Now, why do we need to know that it was a charcoal fire? Who cares? Yeah. Right? It, it does, does that really matter? Well, actually, it does. It's really amazing. Why does the Gospel of John end with Peter's three confessions of faith by a charcoal fire? Because mm -hmm. earlier in the story, Peter denied the Lord three times standing by a charcoal fire. Wow. John 18, 18. It's the only time that word is used in, in all of Scripture, those two places. Now, the slaves and the officers were standing there having made a charcoal fire, for it was cold and they were warming themselves, and Peter was also with them standing and warming himself. Hmm. It's really amazing, just this, this beautiful picture of total renewal. And, you know, Jesus isn't asking Peter, do you love me, because he didn't know. Peter, right. he was asking Peter in many ways to give Peter reassurance of total restoration, right? He brought him mm. back to the scene of the crime to say, all is forgiven, all is forgotten, there's a new day. So Peter's chicken, yeah. it was a reminder that, that Peter was not Judas. A new day had begun. And, you know, I grew up, I had really bad asthma growing up, and... Um, Nighttime for an asthmatic is, is, is a horrible realm, mm. and nights can last a very long time. And so years ago, my father took me on a, on a fishing trip on the Delaware River, and that was before cell phones, okay? And even before inhalers, you have these little asthmatic inhalers. And we were, we were gone for a three-day trip along the Delaware River in the middle of nowhere, mm. okay, with no phones. We were three days away from civilization. And in the beginning of the night, I had a terrible asthma attack, a terrible asthma attack. And I'll never forget fighting for air the whole night. I was afraid. My father was afraid. Something happened. As soon as the light started to shine in the morning, as soon as the hmm. sun came up over the trees, just the hope that, that, that the, sun was set, the sun was rising, a new day began, and I started... I was able to breathe again. In fact, I remember grabbing a fishing rod. My dad yelled at me, he said, put that back, Seth, we're leaving, right? 
Hmm. But just by virtue of the fact that I saw a new day, it, it gave me hope. And that new hope gave me new oxygen in my lungs. And so Psalm 30, verse 5, for his anger is but a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Hmm. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Peter's chicken shouts out to us, the night is failure of failure is finally over. A new day has begun. And so if I could summarize, you know, this study about the gospel according to Peter's chicken, right? If the rooster could talk, he would literally tell us three things. One, stop trusting ourselves in ourselves. Th- two, to remember that Jesus is the hero of our faith. And then three, Amen. and finally, we can be encouraged that the night is almost over. So that, my friend, is the gospel according to Peter's chicken. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And I hope this really blessed you guys as much as it did me. And well, Lord, we just ask that you would just bless our viewers, uh, uh, whatever they're struggling with, whatever their night is, whatever their struggle is, Lord, that, that you would encourage them that you have overcome, that you are the Redeemer, and that you are stronger than any situation they're facing. Just pray that you would encourage them, bless them, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Seth. You're welcome.